this evening. Um, been been several years since I uh, dealt with this thought, so I thought I might do it again this evening. Okay, uh, Psalm 26, and we'll look here at some very well known scripture here in the book of Psalms, uh, and that would be, um, I think, maybe verse 2, uh, Psalm 26, and verse number 2. Okay, amen. Psalm 26, verse number 2. If you're at home watching this tonight, or, or drive, driving, you just listen. But if you're at home, get your Bible out and follow along with us this evening. And I'll bring you the message tonight. Very important. Very important. Psalm 26, verse 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Your reins will be like, like what you guide something with. Like a horse. What a, you stra- uh, and then your heart will be what's inside of you. He said, Lord, I'm, I'm moving. Now, I want you to examine me. Now, I want to use that tonight and, and preach on the subject. Get your 20, 23 summer tune up. As we enter into the summer of 2023, uh, every one of us needs to get a checkup. Just like you do in your car. M- many people plan a vacation uh, this time of year. And before you go on vacation, you'll have your car checked. Years ago, they'd say, uh, give it a tune-up. That's when they put spark plugs and checked a carburetor and everything. A lot of new cars, I don't even they have carburetors no more. But they still a lot of things to do uh, with wire, uh, all your flu- uh, levels, coolant, and uh, uh, antifreeze, oil, uh, and, and your tires, and all that kind of stuff as you get your car ready for a trip this summer. Now, I, you understand tonight that me and you as Christians are getting ready to enter the summer of 2023. This will be the wickedest, worst summer we've ever seen in our lives. We're already seeing things, already, right now. Okay, and you know, there's, I've been pastoring a long, long time. I've been pastoring a church longer than probably me, half of y'all in here have been alive on this earth. And I've never seen it fail yet. There's something about, there's something about long, cold winter, and, and, and it gets warm, and, and you can feel that heat when you go out in the, in the yard, at night especially, and, 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 the, and, and frogs and birds and, and snakes are out, and, and, uh, uh, and school's out, and there, there's something about it. There's just something about this time of year. I love it. May is my favorite month of the year. April, I, I give it up for the youth rally, but I love May. But this, this time we're in now, June, July, August, that is a very dangerous time. If you're not careful, if you're like most Christians, the pull of the world gets very, very strong about this time of year. And if you're not real careful, you'll hear others talking about their trip to the beach. You'll hear others talking about, oh, we went here, and we're going there, and we're going to a concert, and we're going there, and we're going there. And, and then automatically people start uh, taking their clothes off. I, I see them doing it while it's still cold a few weeks ago. Just could not wait to go naked almost out in public. And if the temptation is that if you're not careful, you'll, you'll hear that music, and you'll feel that spirit. I mean, am I the only one that's ever felt that? I, I see a lot of y'all, and I don't know what you're talking about, Brad. Well, I, it must be nice. Uh, okay, I'm, it must be nice because I'm telling you, every summer I feel I, I feel the devil pulling on me. And I mean, it's everywhere you go. You may have arrived, no temptation bothers you, nothing like that. My hat's off to you. Uh, but for most people in here, it's got a pull to it. It has a very, very strong pull to it. And so tonight, I'd like to maybe get us ready um, Maybe get us ready uh, to make this trip, okay? Say we're going on a trip this summer. Now, your spiritual life is going to be like a car tonight. So we're going to compare life to a car. I've, I've got my car ready going trip. I had to get one ready the other day. I had a tire bust on one. Never would get right. I'd wind up buying three, uh, four whole tires because the other ones wore out anyway. And I didn't want to have one new one and three 80% ones gone. So you know how that goes. And uh, it's always something. You have to have this. You have to have that. You have to have, make sure. I had one front end out of line. Can't stand that neither. Going down the road, and every time you let go of the wheel, it wants to go this way. And uh, uh, so I, I got that fixed. And uh, you know, just stuff like that. And so tonight, our life is like that. Our life is like that. Driving a car, going on a trip. How many of y'all got your driver's license? Raise your hand. All right. 
uh, just about all the uh, adults in here tonight. Now, uh, I've, been, I've been begging for two years for bus drivers, and we finally got an opportunity to do it, and I said I'd go ahead and do it if nobody else would, and I did, and one other man, Andy, me and Andy. We went to bus driver's uh, classes this week, and uh, it sort of got my attention back on uh, how actually dangerous it is to be out on the highway. I went to four or five guys that couldn't go because of work or something, and then some more is going to get on it next time in a few months. But I got good news to report to you tonight. We both passed. Amen. I went to, I went to, you, thought, you talk about somebody in a mess. I sat in school for three days. I'd never do that for nobody else but bus kids. I, I, I thought I was going to die. I sat there like this, like this. And, and Andy, he aced it. I mean, you know, he just one of them people that's real smart about mechanical things. He just say, like, I sit there like, what in the world? They talking about air brakes and how to do that. I don't know about air brakes. I've drove a bus before. I just, just let me drive a bus. I'll figure it out. Uh, but there's 110 questions on that test. 110, brother. And I prayed and I said, God... <laughs> If you want me to do this, you're going to have to lead me. And he did. He did. It's ABC. And, and I passed and he passed. Now we have to go take a driver's test. And, and we're legal bus drivers. Hallelujah. And we need about at least all you other men that are of driving age. I don't know why y'all won't help. Uh, but it, the guilt's on you. It ain't on me no more. I'm, I ain't asking you to do something I won't do myself. Just occasionally, once in a while, we need spare drivers. But anyway, I, I got to thinking about driving, man. It's dangerous. Lord, they told us all kind of crazy scenarios about getting hit by rail trains and everything else. And uh, I was scared to get out on the highway the time we got out of there. Uh, but so what is it? You, after you drive so long, you get a little, you get a little uh, less cautious, don't you? You get a little slack. We all do. You, don't, you, know, you know, you get a little drowsy. And you drive with one hand and one finger. And, and then you knee. Uh, 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 you ain't supposed to do that. Uh, uh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, you get, and your life's like that. You laugh like that. Everything goes good for a while. You don't have no wrecks. You don't mess up. And you'll lighten up if you ain't real careful. You'll just lighten up here a little bit. Lighten up there a little bit. Well, I know that, that movie. I really shouldn't go to that. But it's really, I mean, everybody, I just want to see it so bad. You know, you lighten up a little bit. You'll wreck. You'll wreck if you're not careful. That music. I know I gave it up last summer at camp, but I was just over emotional. And uh, little by little, you know, uh, you'll wreck. So let's nail some things down here tonight and get our heart in tune. Hey, look, we, we prayed too hard. We labored too long for the youth rally to just let the devil have the victory back and not be shouting ground tonight. Amen. Lord have mercy, y'all. We put some I, I ain't been. I ain't got over it yet. Ask them. I, 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 my shoulder's messed up. I think it was like Jacob where he got his thigh out of joint after wrestling that angel on. I ain't, I ain't over the youth rally yet physically. Uh, I, I'm weak and I, I feel different and everything. We put a lot into that. Heart, mind, soul, body into that youth rally. And I just refuse, I just refuse to walk in youth camp over there in Greenville, Tennessee in a few weeks. And I say, well, we was on fire at the youth rally. And we was on fire at camp, but we've been out sinning and we've been out doing stuff we ain't supposed to do. So now camp's born. No, 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 no. We ought to let that same fire that was burning at youth camp last summer and that same fire God started in us at, at the youth rally this year. And, and it ain't worth it. It ain't worth Trading those blessings. Some of y'all going to get over at the camp and you're going to say, my goodness, I wish I was like I was last year. Well, you can be. They, but one thing stop you, and that's sin. That's sin, brother. If we'll get down to business, we'll pray and we'll fast and we'll put our hearts into this. I challenge all of our young people, let's do it. I'm going to name off a few things right quick and, uh, and, and then we're going to have a meeting. Number one, you know what you got to do if you're going on a long trip? You got to make sure your battery's charged. You got to make sure your battery's charged. That's some good old fashioned Bible preaching services. Amen. Listen, if your battery's dead, you ain't going nowhere. I mean, uh, one, of the, one of the most aggravating in the world is to get in a car and turn around and go click, 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 click. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, Kelly's battery was going dead. It's been three or four months ago, and it got to where it's slow to start. You turn around and go click, click. And I said, well, maybe it'll be all right. It's just cold. And it got warm, and I thought, it'll be all right now. Well, sure enough, uh, she got out there one, uh, one day, deader than 4 o'clock. Wouldn't start. I put it off, put it off, put it off. I finally had to take it and have a battery put in it. Uh, and that thing was gone. 
But you know what? I, some of you, some of you, here's the way you was at the youth rally just a little over a month and a half ago. I, or you push it like that. Here's you tonight. Click. And by camp, you're going to be nothing. Nothing. Your battery's dead. Now, how do you get your battery charged? You have to hook it up. Jump. That's what I'm doing here tonight. I'm jumping you off. Amen. I have people, I have people say that before. They say, oh, Brother Danny, I didn't think Sunday would ever come. But jump me off, preacher. I, my car won't start. My spiritual battery's dead. How many times have you ever just felt dead and you tried to get something stirred up inside you and it just ain't there? And you just feel backslidden cold. And about that time, the man of God get up and start preaching. And you'll feel a little uh, electric jolt go through you and hit your soul. And by the time you're leaving, you're firing right up. Sometimes you got to, I, I can just jump you off and you're good. I had to go. But sometimes you got to put a back slow charge. You know what a slow charge is? Where you take it to a garage or you got one of them things at home and you hook it up and you leave it all night long. Did you hear me? I said sometimes you got to charge that battery all night long. Jesus did. Uh, the apostles did. They did in the Bible. If Jesus wasn't too good to have an all night prayer meeting, me and you ain't either. And sometimes you got up early in the morning. You know what I'd encourage us to do before camp? Let's all get on the slow charge, brother. I mean, let it charge you all night long. Wake up in the middle of the night praying. Wake up in the middle of the night reading your Bible. Wake up in the middle of the night. Hey, y'all remember camp last year? Good night, it was out of this world. It was heavenly, brother. That was a breeze from another world coming through that place. And the kids from Rockingham, the kids from Gastonia, and the kids from Alabama, they ain't got over it yet. Wouldn't you just love to see that? Just continue off and pick up where we left off last year. Here, the fire burn. Get your battery charged. Hey, man, how you got to have spark plugs? You got to have spark plugs. Some of these new cars don't even have spark plugs, do they? Have, they invented them without spark plugs? I guess they all have, still have spark plugs. Well, anyway, you got to have them. You should anyway. I mean, you know, they'll, they'll sputter on you, brother. <laughs> they'll, they'll sputter on you. Yeah, I remember uh, Corey had this uh, Volkswagen, I think it was Jetta or a Passat one. I bought her. I bought her a Passat one time. Uh, but I can't remember if it was too. And, uh, and, and that thing got to where every time you'd go up a hill, up Stacy Hill, our above where we live, coming this, we come this way, we'll go up Stacy Hill, it, it'd go, and then it'd smooth out. And I put it off, put it off, you know, ah, it'd clear up, probably some bad gas. You know, you, you tell yourself all that stuff, and it does it again, and it does it again, and it does it again. Finally, I got somebody to look at it. They said, Preacher, you need spark plugs, spark plug wires. I said, Okay, I've got what it costs, and them other little things that go out. The little little thing, uh, what coal pack? That's it. Uh, you might need one of them, and I had to do that in a Lexus, brother. I mean, you think, my goodness, that would never wear out. Uh, but a, a coal pack went bad, and it's better. And you know, I thought about that, and I thought. That's so much like Christians. I know so many Christians. Uh, you up here one Sunday, and I got much more than I asked for. And, and then about, about a month later, I say, everybody come to the choir, and you, you're sputtering, brother. I, I don't feel like saying it. I don't want to come back to church Sunday night. I, hey, you got to get them spark plugs right. Hey, hey, no, give, me, give me another one. Timing's got to be right. Modern cars, I guess it's automatically set. But in the old cars, you had to have timing set. And brother, I, you have scheduled time. You got to have your timing set. Now listen, uh, here, here's where I'm going to get uh, 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 a little personal, a little, a little, a little uh, you know, summer is here, y'all. Summer is here. Uh, you spend time with family. You spend time with friends. You 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 have a garden. Uh, you have to work on your grass. A lot more outside work than there is in the in the winter, obviously. And you have to spend. Uh, I don't know what in the world made you want, want to buy a yard with two acres of grass in it. I, if I ever have another, I'll never do that again. I can tell you that. Uh, but uh, we'll just have mulch and and wood. But anyway, uh, you got to mow the grass. You you work in the garden. Some of you folks love to work in the garden. That's great. I think it's great to have a garden. I think everybody who can should. Really, I do. And uh, I try to 
two years and every, I'd be gone off for revival and come back. Weeds would be growing and be burned up. I can't, I can't mess with it every day. And so I, I usually get to do it. But if you have a little garden, even if it's just a small one out there, grow you some onions and have a few tomato plants and they let your kids see that. Good for them. Uh, we're, they're, they're trying to put farmers out of business all over the world uh, so they can make generic food and poison all of it. Uh, but rather, listen, uh, you got to get your timing set. You got to get your timing set. And I'll tell you what, it's early in the morning. You get up. My timing is I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to spend time with the Lord. I'm going to get down on my knees. I'm going to commit the day to the Lord. I'm going to, I'm going to schedule in my camp time. I'm trying to be ready for camp before we teach the kids. Uh, don't leave the Bible laying around. Uh, uh, spend time in the Lord. Uh, spend time. Don't just, don't just, don't just say, uh, and I'll, I'll get more on this in a minute about uh, some other stuff about vacations. About vacations. Don't listen. Everybody needs a vacation. There is nothing wrong with a vacation. I doubt. I don't know if we'll get one this year or not. But we go so many places, it just makes up for it. Really. Uh, usually, usually uh, we go somewhere. I think. Uh, I think we might have uh, three days in Gutlinburg in August uh, for the kids before they go back to school. But uh, other than that, it's just. Uh, Larry Phillips, Gary's, West Virginia, all that's like a vacation uh, for the kids anyway. And uh, But we don't have one scheduled. But some people, you know, you work a regular job, um, uh, 7 to 3, 8 to 5 and everything, and you say, I want a vacation. Nothing wrong with that at all. Jesus told his disciples, come apart and rest for a while. There's absolutely nothing wrong in the right way uh, to take a vacation. There's really not uh, uh, at all. But you better remember this. You better remember to put God first. And you better remember that you never, never schedule vacations that are places that are not right. Never schedule vacations. But, and you know how I am. You know how I am. I, I am a firm believer in being in church on Sunday. If you, are, if you are scheduling a vacation and you only get to go once or twice to a year, you're going to know it. I, I have no problem with that. And honestly, I think, I think it's good for you. So, no, I really do. Uh, but... What I, what I do have a problem with, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be straight with you tonight, try to help you. I have a problem of people sitting around, Christian people, on Saturday night and saying, you know what, it's, it's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow and everything. We, we ain't went nowhere in a while. Let's just take the kids and go to Wilson Creek and cook out. I got a problem with that. I, I really do. I really listen. I'm not against. I'm not against going off on a vacation, visiting relatives, and stuff like that. But just when you're right here in town and lay out of church to go to the mountains, that ain't right, y'all. That ain't right. And if you do it, I don't know anybody in here that does it. You probably do. I have heard of it, but it's not right. Go on Saturday. Amen. You say, well, I, I gotta. I got some other stuff I gotta do on Saturday. Let it go. You let church go. Get in the house of God. I'm not saying it's wrong to be gone a couple times a year on vacation. And, and that, there's no scripture for that one, one way or the other. But I, I tell you, you need every service you can get in. And them little kids need what their Sunday school class and the preaching more than they do Wilson Creek on Sunday. Amen. Amen. You know good and well that's right. If I did it, you'd think it's wrong. You sure would. And I don't do it, brother. When it's church time, I'm here. And if I'm not here, I'm preaching at another church. Right. That's right, brother. Hey, you better, you better get your time and say it. Nothing wrong with going to the creek. Nothing wrong with going places. Nothing wrong with as long as you don't deliberately, deliberately. And I know there's, there's, there's athletics. There's, there's, pick, there's, I understand all that. I'm not opposed to all of that. Uh, uh, it, it, you know, it, we get into some hairy stuff there, and people say, Well, I watch you online when we're gone. I, I understand all that. I ain't fussing to nobody, but I'm telling you, just deliberately laying out of church for no reason that's a different story. If you have obligations and you meet them, that, that's between you and the Lord. But, but if you, if you have work or you have a family, something or something like that, that's between you and the Lord, but just say, I don't want to go to church tomorrow. I just go loaf. That's wrong. Time and set. Amen. That's right. Breaks. You better have some breaks. One whole section of that, that bus class this week was on breaks. Air breaks. I don't know how to air breaks. I know they make a noise like a cow. Or something. Uh, and, and I said, and they said, now when you 
when you got your spring brake on, which is park brake, you're supposed to, every time you stop, you're supposed to put on parking brake. And they said you're not supposed to put your foot on that air brake while your spring brake's on. I didn't know that. Well, hold that. Some got the air pressure and goes down or something like that. But take that off, then put your foot on the air brakes, then you can go or whatever. And you know what? Brakes are important. I don't like brakes. I don't use brakes. Hey, you ever going anywhere with brakes on? Huh? But sometimes, sometimes you got to have them. Sometimes you got to have brakes. And if you got a car and you don't have brakes, you're going to hit something and wreck. You hear me well tonight. Everybody hear me well tonight. I'm not up here to court you or get you to love me. I hope you do. I'm not up here to win your favor and make you like me. But I hope you do. I'm up here to try to warn you the best I can from my, the Bible and my heart to keep your life. I hope you'll take it like that. You better know where to put on the brakes. The old family comes out. The old friends say, come on over Friday night. We're just going to have a cookout. And you know from past what they're going to be doing. You go somewhere like that and you're not in control. And you know so and so's going to be there and he's going to bring the beer. So and so's going to be there. And, then, and you say, well, I, I, I just like him, old boy. I like to hang. Well, I, we don't drink. Uh, well, you, you better know where to put the brakes on. That's right. what I do. Brother, if there's going to be drinking in a place where I'm going, I just don't go. You say, well, what if they, get a, they can come to my house, we'll do something else. I, you do, yeah, between you and the Lord, you, you better, and I'm not, I shouldn't say this, but I, t- drinking ain't even temptation to me. Never have, I'll better shut up, I want one tomorrow. I, I never have, I never have drunk, it's never bothered me, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn or nothing. I, I'm wicked than anybody in here, but I, I don't want to be around it. I don't want to smell it. I don't want to hear how people act and talk when they're drinking it. And brother, I'm telling you, I've told you a thousand times, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, all three of them are triplets. They're triplets. Where you got one of them, the other two shows up sooner or later. You hang around where they're smoking pot, and where they're, there'll be some hanky-panky going on. There'll be some drugs out. I guarantee you they will. Eventually. Eventually. Oh, no, Brother Danny, you're making I've done this too long. I've done this too long. You hang around the edge. You fall off. You better know where to put the brakes on. You better know where to put the brakes on. Amen. Amen. You young people go to the mall on, you ain't got no business going to the mall on Saturday night, going to Hooters or some fool place like that, uh, where it ain't nothing but a bar and claiming you want chicken wings. Yeah, Amen. Amen. I don't want to go to a place. Hey, listen, brother, I ain't going to get chicken wings, but I don't want to be around a bunch of drunks neither. Hey, hey, you better know when to put the brakes on. You better know when to put the brakes on. Uh, but, uh, you better you know, avoid an accident. Uh, you better, listen, listen, listen. You better know where to go and where not to go. I, I love, I love the, the ocean, the coast. That's what Christians go to the coast. Sinners go to the beach. I love it, honestly, for one day. One day I'm, I'm done. I like the waves. I like the sand. But come on, y'all. Come on, let's, can we be honest here tonight? You, if I was you women... And I had a husband that loved to go to the beach. And all he wanted to do is go to the beach three or four times. I'd watch that crook if I was you. He don't even go swimming. He's going to look at the women's what he's wanting to do. And say, well, I couldn't help it. They're just there in front of me. And I'm telling you, men can't look at women dressed like that and keep their heart right with God. Can't be done. You're either sick or queer. If you can do that and it don't bother you, you're sick or queer. I'm just going to tell you like, I'm, I'm getting this off my heart tonight. I'm warning some of y'all. There used to be people as right as you are sitting right here and they're out. They're out. Because they didn't know where to put the brakes on. Let me say this. Listen, all you, can, you, you, you sons of thunder guys, you preachers, you know what you've done, right? I don't know if you realize this or not, boys. But when you stand up and say, Lord, call me to preach, and then you stand up and do it, and all these other churches, they're going to watch every move you make. It ain't fair, but they're going to do it. They're going to judge you on a different level than they would like. Like they can, they can see Jeff doing something and wouldn't think nothing about it. See one of y'all doing something. Oh. 
Well, I, I thought he's a preacher. Now, that ain't right, but that's just the way people are, amen? And you got to watch your testimony, brother. I mean, if you put a picture on Facebook of you like this showing your two hairs, they're going to say, he was preaching at camp. That. And, and by the way, people say, well, what's wrong with him showing his chest? Well, here, here I'll, I'll let you answer that question. You know how you can tell if something's wrong? The other kids notice it just like that. You know how you tell if somebody's dress is too short? Some of y'all wear a dress that's real short, something like that, and you think, well, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. But when somebody else from another church gets up, you say, did you see that dress you had on? You girls can tell it in a second, can't you? You can tell it in a second when somebody's got on a dress too short. Don't act. You, know, you can see it in everybody but you. Amen. I, I, you ladies say, did you, Lord have mercy. I, listen, you can't, you, and girls, y'all that sing, Kerrigan, I love y'all, I love y'all, I mean, I'm related to you, uh, uh, tricks adopted in our family, uh, Paisley, all y'all, y'all girls, Molly, all y'all, uh, Haveline, Andrea, all y'all, when you get up here, and, you know what, when you get up here and sing, those other groups are watching, those other groups are watching. And they watch you and you stand up here and say, and they say, man, them girls got God on them. Them girls, got, you know what that does? That puts a lot of responsibility on you. When you're up in front of people, am I right? Y'all help me, mamas. I, they, they're watching you like a hawk. And if you do something, that, that something, they'll think, well, they did it. And they'll go tell their preacher, well, they do it. Shining light girls do that, I guess. Shining light boys do that. And then it just gets lower and lower and lower. We need somebody to say, hey, I'm putting on the brakes. I'm putting on the brakes. Now, look. What you do in your own time, your own family, you know, I ain't going to argue with you. I ain't, don't try to dictate y'all's lives. I don't tell you how long something got to be. How, how, but I will tell you this. If you get up and you're singing in the choir or you're doing something for God and then you put pictures of yourself on Facebook showing this part of you and your belly, you're going to hurt your testimony and other people too. If you do it with you and your family, I'll just between you and the Lord. But for heaven's sake, y'all have enough sense not to put it out there for the world to say. You want me to get me a belly shirt? I ain't got a belly shirt. I got a wife beater. But I ain't putting it on. I don't put nothing on those but. Nothing. There ain't one picture of me on there. Unless it was one of y'all did it. But I'm telling you girls. You said, well, Brother Danny. Well, when you stand up and say, I'm a godly girl. I'm singing for Jesus Christ. My life is dedicated to Him. They're, they expect something of you. I know it's old fashioned. I know people say, well, well they're, they're just being cute. And I, I'm, I'm, look, y'all, I've dealt with this. I had raised three girls. I, I, I know I fought this battle for 40 something years. We, I, well, I wouldn't let my girls go to the public pool when they was little because it's so wicked. And so we built one house. I've done that for that reason. And, and when there's all girls out, they can wear whatever they want. Although that's going to have to change probably. Because some of the girls, ain't like, they like girls, and some of the girls didn't used to be girls. I'm telling you, brother, we're in a mess. We are in a mess. But where there's mixed, that's why we make them dressed easy to camp. That's why, look, you, you got me hitting out, like I said, you say, well, you ain't telling me what we, no, I'm not. I ain't trying to. But I'm telling you, if you put pictures of yourself on just Look at it like you would look at them other churches if you saw it. And I guarantee you, you'd say, oh, I didn't think they'd let her wear that. I'm sort of surprised. She's a preacher's daughter. And look at the shorts she's got on. You, you do it to them. And they're going to do it to you. I'm not, I'm not trying to set up a bunch of judges. And I know it's none of nobody's business. So if it ain't their business, don't put it out for everybody to see. We, if we take a vacation, we go somewhere by us, we get us a halfway decent private place where my kids wear whatever. I mean, I, I ain't arguing with you and I ain't judging nobody. I don't even know, I don't even know what y'all do on vacation. I, and I don't want to know. I ain't following you around. I, I, I know what it's like. I know you don't want to look like a weirdo. You don't want your kids to be looked at as, oh, those weird people. They go to some weird church that don't let them be in where they can't anymore. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want to have fun. But if it comes to keeping your neck in this cover or somebody taking us weird, let them think you're weird, bless God. Because you know that ain't right. You know it ain't. I don't care if everybody in the world does it. Still ain't right. You better know where to put the brakes on. You better know where to put the brakes on. Uh, 
So if you're drunk, get it right with God and don't put it on the nose book. I'm just kidding. You got to keep your heart in tune. Keep your heart in tune. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening. We'll keep your heart in tune. Stay in fellowship with God. Be careful of words and phrases and places you go. If not, I feel sorry for y'all. I feel sorry for anybody who has to go to public school. I feel sorry for anyone. One sister sent me a thing at a, a clinic or a doctor's office or something. Is that, that around here? Or, or at? Under the Lord, you ought to see that. Talking about I'll decide what gender you are. Little, for little kids up in the Peter. Now, if we did that, we, they'd say we're proselytes. Raise up some kind of standard that we can raise our kids by. There's got to be a difference, y'all. Y'all know me. I'm all for having fun. But I tell you what that book said. That book said that thigh right there, that's considered nakedness in the Old Testament. And you know your upper party. I mean, you know that, obviously. I mean, but uh, it's considered nakedness. If it ain't, what is? You tell me what nakedness is. <laughs> Lord, they go, they, they go out now and look like an elephant with a diaper on in Walmart. And, and I guess they think they look good. I don't know. It looks awful. It's horrible. Uh, but it, it don't make, you say, well, I'm, I'm the old and fat. They won't matter. It's still, <laughs> I guess it's still wrong. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it is. <laughs> so you'll get out on that. I don't look good. So it's all right for me dressed like a skank. No, no, no. And then you got to keep, you got to make sure your lights work. Headlights, low beam, high beam, lamp under my feet, light under my path. That's the word of God. Low, high. Look, listen, my car, I ain't never had a car like that. It's got uh, automatic dim. And you can put it on bright and it's so cool. Uh, you can meet a car coming and they dim. And as soon as the car gets by, it brightens up. Here comes the car and it does it by itself. And that's sort of cool. I, I, guess, I, I guess I enjoy that. Uh, but you got to be able to see way out there and you got to see tomorrow too. Low beam, high beam. Amen. You got to have your front end lined up. You got to be lined up by the book. You got to be lined up. And uh, what the front end lined up means is one of the tires to be, a lot of you guys know a lot more about cars than I do, but it's common sense that the back tires got to follow the front tires. <laughs> if they're over here a little bit, <laughs> something ain't going to wear them out and you ain't going to run right. I'll, I'll never forget that old bus they used to have at East Side Baptist Church in Nebo there. Uh, East Side Baptist. And they had a bus ministry. And old Bill Long, he tied as a bark on a tree and he wouldn't spend no money. They bought an old bus, paid about six or $800 for it. And uh, that, that old bus, but that old, is an old blue bus. I'll never forget it. That's their bus. One, I got behind that thing one Sunday morning, uh, going to church, and it was so out of line that the front end, it was it was going down the road like this. It was crooked, going down a straight road, and <laughs> that was crazy. It must have wore them tires out every every two or three months. It was going down the road like that right there. Uh, and now that things are out, man. That ain't gonna work. Now look, you know what you got to do. You got to get down and get your life lined up right with the book. Front end line. It'll pull. Some of y'all pull in a little bit. You hear that music? It, it's, it's Christian. Yeah, whatever. You done wait too long to tell me that. It's Christian, brother Dan. That's a Christian group. Yeah, you done wait. You got the wrong preacher to try to pull that bull on. Hey, I, you and you ain't gonna put on these kids neither. They know good and well. Look, when your car pulls up and you can't tell what you're listening to, something ain't right. Something ain't right. And as the song says, just like this: Jesus is my way. Jesus is my way. You know what that is? That's Christian words to "We will, we will." That's what that is. And that same spirit of we will rock you is still in that music. You ain't dumb no more. You're educated. And so, and it's, I ain't going to get off on all that. I done made some of y'all mad and I need you to help me next week. Uh, but please, I'm just trying to help you. Just trying to help you. You don't see nobody getting under conviction to it. Something's wrong. You, you, better, you better get your front end lined up. Y'all pulling a little. 
You pulling, you was going straight. Something knocked you out of line. Some Hollywood movies come out. I don't know what the how popular movie is now. I'm not trying to stand up here and act like some kind of sanctimonious saint. That no, I listen, y'all. I I I I'm wickeder than anybody in here. I can't let my flesh have that much room. I'll be thinking something, feeling something. I should. I can feel it, man. I can feel it. When when I hear music, I can. It gets it, it gets all over me. I can feel it. It's a spirit. It's spiritual. And sometimes I wish I wasn't like that. Man, I can smell it like a skunk from here to that back wall back there. You better have your front end lined up. You better check your oil. You better check your oil. What's the oil in the Bible? Picture up. Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. You cannot lay on a beach with music and naked people all around you and feel that heat of that sun and people sweating and, and almost naked and, and stay filled with the Spirit. Now, if you can, if you can, have at it, I reckon. You, you can have that atmosphere. Well, Brother Danny, what can we do to help? I'm not trying to be an old stick in the mud. I want you to go swimming. I want you to take your family to the coast. I want you to enjoy the beach somewhere, someplace. I want you to enjoy it. Have a good time. But you cannot, you cannot be in the middle of hell and keep your mind on heaven. It can't be done. Some y'all, some y'all, you have so many vacations. I tell you what your problem is. You got too much money. You got too much money. Lord, might have to knock some of your money down a little bit. You ain't, when I first started preaching, you only had to worry about Fourth of July and Christmas. And now, brother, it starts in April and goes to September. Eight and ten weeks a year, people take off. You just got too much money, and money people sure act funny when they get a little money. And the reason why the Lord won't give you a lot, he can't trust you. You get wiles of bucks as soon as you get a little money in your pocket. Think you got to go blow it somewhere. Just check your oil and your air condition. Stay cool. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. You know why? You know why you can go to another church and get a blessing and come here? Because you're mad at half the people all the time. You're mad at this, mad at that, mad. You're mad at me. Look, I know I'm bound to make y'all mad. I know some of you don't tell, but I mean, it, you can't get up here and say all this and not make somebody aggravated. I mean, if I if I had a preacher I didn't get mad at once in a while, I'd say, hey, no good. I mean, you got that's what your job is. But we got to love each other and get over that, y'all. We got to all work together. You know what we got in churches? We're, pew rage. That's <laughs> a new. <laughs> I just invented that. Pew rage. You got my say. Hey. I was going to do that. Hey, I want to teach that Sunday school class. Hey, I want preacher didn't do that. He didn't brag on me. I don't know. Pew rage. In his air condition. The best advice is to keep on doing what it took you to get going to start with and fighting the soldier and fill it up with gas, pull your hood down, check all your gauges. And floor it for the glory of God this summer. I wish. I'm asking all y'all young people to help me to get ready for camp. I know that's asking a lot because I didn't do it when I was your age. When I first got saved, we left all the planning, the preparing, praying, everything up to the preacher, and we just come and enjoyed it. I understand that. But it sure would be nice if some of y'all would mature up to the point where you can say, hey, we're going to take this thing serious. In the summer of 2023, let's stand with our heads bowed. Let's stand with our heads bowed. We kind of come play something right quick. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Nobody's looking, nobody's talking. Nobody's looking, nobody's talking. Maybe God spoke to you as an individual, as a mom or a dad. I, I can't believe that He ain't dealt with you about something. Vacation. You go to church when you're on vacation? You go to church, right? Being on vacation, no excuse to lay out church. If you ain't near one, you watch, it, watch it online. But there's no excuse not to. Maybe you're here tonight. Say, preacher. Preacher. I need help. I need to come down there and get done my life right with God. Summer 23 is going to be wicked. I got kids. I got grandkids. Lord have mercy. I want to be 
I want them to have something to believe in. Something. I want to be able to come to church and feel something more strong than what they feel out there in the world. Amen. I know people have jobs. I know people have uh, careers in college or, or sports or stuff like that, that or, where they travel. I understand that. I ain't stupid. But I'm thinking, brother, if you can, you can, if you can do all that you can do to keep your family, everything that goes on this summer, do everything you can. I ain't, I ain't mad at nobody. But do everything you can to keep your family involved this summer. God will bless you. Brother. They're getting older. As soon as they get old enough, they'll start making bad decisions if you ain't real careful. Too many parents think, ah, they'll be all right. They're good kids. Then when they get about 14, 15, you start seeing a difference. 16, 17, another difference. If you ain't careful, you'll lose them. You'll lose them. Amen. Father, do what ought to be done in our life this evening. God, I thank you, Lord, that we get to live 2023. But, Lord, we know that with this comes a lot of responsibility. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you'd bless this summer. Lord, that you'd give us the best summer we've ever had for the glory of God. Have your way in our hearts this evening. God, do what ought to be done. Lord, God, move in power. Let Bless our church. Lord, we know the more we get sin out of here, the more we honor you, the more you can bless it. We know we're not saved by works, kept by works, and we don't earn your fruit. But God, you want a, a clean vessel to flow through. And I pray, God, that you'd find it in us. Have your way this evening, Lord. God, do what ought to be done in every life. God, give us the best camp we've ever had for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray and for the sake. Amen. 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 All right, have a seat. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.